systems tempest 170 um, I've had this kayak for two seasons now uh, I've had a good time with it uh, so we're gonna talk about the pros the cons uh, a couple people on the channel have been interested I've seen some chatter in the comments about it uh, so it's definitely a different type of kayak and uh, it's a lot of people are gonna like it it's not for everybody so uh, let's talk about why that is all right so here we are and you can see that this is a beautiful kayak. I love the way it looks. So, uh, some of the pros, it's fast. It's a fast kayak. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how fast later in the video. We'll talk about hole speed and some other things. Um, one of the reasons it's fast is because it has a long water line. Um, it's a 17-foot boat, but you can see it's got a very uh, straight keel, right? So there's not a lot of rocker on this boat. That means you get a lot of water line. So you, you get close to your 17 feet in water line. It's also very narrow, so there's not a lot of resistance as you move through the water. Um, We'll talk about the dimensions of this boat compared to uh, some others uh, a little bit later in the video. But because you've got a long water line close to your, your 17 feet of boat, and you've got a very narrow boat, it's fast. Um, some of the cons related to that, it's a little bit harder to turn. You need to be able to put this boat on its side, um, on its edge rather, to, uh, to turn quickly. Um, that leads to some of the cons of this boat which we'll talk about in just a sec. So because this boat's so narrow and uh, because of the way the hull is designed, there's not a lot of primary stability in this boat. And that's intentional. Um, the idea is this boat is, has got a lot of secondary stability. So you can put this boat on edge very easily, right? Put it up on edge and you can turn it. Um, you can do a, a bow rudder while you're on edge, and this boat turns beautifully. But you've, you've got to be a, a skilled paddler to do that. Um, you, need, uh, you need good balance because of the, the lack of primary stability. And I'm not going to say it's, it's bad primary stability, but it's not, it's not good compared to a lot of other boats, uh, like, like the Perception Expression that I own or uh, the uh, Tsunami. So this is really a different type of boat. It's built um, to be a fast boat. So Wilderness System used to make these in um, uh, fiberglass, I believe possibly Kevlar. I've seen some people say they owned a Kevlar version. Um, you know, the, the poly version is what we got here, the rotomolded um, polyethylene version. So um, because of the way the boat is made, there's not a lot of room. It's not a roomy boat. The, the cockpit is not very roomy. Um, this isn't a boat that's going to work well for a bigger, uh, heavier person, or a, you know, a taller person um, might also have some issues because uh, the higher your center of gravity, the more difficult it is to uh, to do a, a re-entry in this boat. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, re-entry and uh, and rescues in this boat. So if you're a solo paddler, one of the things to consider in this boat is that a, a self-rescue is actually difficult because of the lack of primary stability. So if you're gonna you're gonna self-rescue in a boat like this, 
uh, I would highly recommend you invest in a paddle float to stabilize the boat when you make your re-entry. Um, so uh, when I'm doing a rescue in this boat, I either use a paddle float or I'm, uh, I'm paddling with another person and I do a assisted uh, T rescue with a hook and heel uh, re-entry. I'll put some links in the video description of how I do that. But if you're, if you're a novice paddler, if you have um, no experience with this boat, um, I would highly recommend you, you practice your re-entry and, and buy a paddle float. You're going you're gonna to need it. Um, this is um, it's a tight boat, but it's got the Wilderness Systems outfitting. The, uh, the seat, very comfortable. You can see I've taken the, the thigh pads out uh, just to have more room in this kayak. One of the things is I, I don't like about it, uh, in addition to the lack of primary stability, is it's it's not a very deep kayak. So, you know, normally I might put a, a cushion in here. Uh, I have uh, a Jackson uh, Sweet Cheeks, which is a pad that uh, that goes in the seat. There's actually not much room in here to put anything like that. So. It is cramped. I've taken this on a, a couple of long trips, and uh, there's not a lot of room to move your legs around. Just, just because the hole is, uh, the deck of the kayak, rather, is, is relatively low. We'll talk about the dimensions compared to so, some of the others. But, you know, it's got the fantastic outfitting that, uh, that you would expect from uh, Wilderness Systems. Um, you can see it's got the compass recess. So I have, um, rather than, you know, drill holes, put the more expensive, uh, you know, Brunton compass that you usually see in this, these kayaks. I've opted for a strap-on uh, version, which is, um, it's easier to maintain, it's cheaper, you don't have to maintain caulk or anything like that, and it, it works just as well. Uh, I actually saved uh, a little bit of money on that. I'll put a link uh, to where I got that in the, in the uh, video description. But, um, you've got... Uh, Got some storage in the back. And, and it's got, you know, you got three bulkheads, right? You got a bulkhead here in the front, and then you've got your your day hatch with a bulkhead behind the seat, another bulkhead here. So you've got a lot of room. The capacity uh, for this kayak is about 325 pounds, um, so you can get a lot of a lot of gear in it. It, it might actually be 300. I'll have to. To check on that, but um, point is, if you're, you, you know, you've got plenty of room to store food, gear, whatever, as long as you pack efficiently. So, um, you know, a lot of great things about this kayak, but there are some cons too. You know, pros: very, very fast kayak, great secondary stability. Um, cons: uh, it's a little bit cramped if you're a bigger paddler. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of primary stability. So these are things that I would say um, won't be an issue for an advanced paddler. But if you're a new paddler, I would not, I probably wouldn't start with this kayak. It's, it's probably just not for you. The biggest issue with this kayak that I have is the difficulty of, of uh, solo rescues, solo reentries. So you really, and I can't emphasize this enough, you need that paddle float if you're gonna own this boat. Um, and the speed, the speed is great, but it's, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about hull speed in a second uh, in the video, which I'm gonna to switch to next. You'll see that that speed is, uh, it's, it's great, but it's not significantly more compared to other boats. If you, you look at the, the Wilderness System Zephyr or the uh, Perception Expression 15, those are reasonably fast boats too. They're not gonna be as fast as this boat but the speed is actually not that big, uh, big of a difference. So, you know, this would be a great kayak to take on a race. But if you're not racing, um, you know, this might not be the kayak for you. I, I, I do like it. Um, whether I'm going to keep this kayak for a decade, whether I'll have it 10 years from now, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'll probably still have my Expression 15 10 years from now, I'm guessing. But... Uh, We'll see. I'm still, you know, I'm still, uh, still having fun with this kayak, and uh, it is, it is a good kayak, but it's not going to be the kayak for, uh, for everyone. I would say if you've, if you've got balance issues, um, it's not the kayak for you. If you're 
a bigger paddler. It's not the kayak for you. They did at one point make an 18 foot version, which they stopped making. They only made that in fiberglass. And uh, Wilderness Systems has stopped making fiberglass kayaks. So you can't get that anymore unless you get it used. And if you buy, uh, one thing to be cognizant of, if you buy a fiberglass, uh, fiberglass version of this boat, uh, you need to check it out very carefully before you purchase it because they did have some uh, quality issues when they when they made these in fiberglass for for a while. They were made in China and some of them were were not. They didn't hold up well. They cracked a lot. So I've seen a few online, and uh, they were just too deteriorated for uh, for me to purchase. So unless you got time to do repairs, they may not be for you. So um. We talk a little bit about the whole speed uh, and the speed in general of, of kayaks in a second, and uh, also going to have some footage of uh, this kayak next to a few others. Uh, the point, the point to keep in mind with this kayak is is it's designed to be fast. So we'll talk about you know how the whole differs differs a little bit compared to uh, some other kayaks. All right, let's talk about hull speed. Um, so what we've got here is the equation. For hull speed, um, and hull speed is basically um, or displacement speed is the speed at which the wave length of the boat is equal to the length of the boat or the kayak. And so, really, what we're looking at is 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 everything else being equal, right? Paddler weight being equal, paddler strength, um, endurance. If all those things are equal, the longer boat is is the faster boat, and and that's just because of this equation. So you can see that. As we go from uh, a water line of 12 feet all the way up to 17 feet, that the uh, hull speed of the kayak increases. Um, so, real important here is is just to look at the the difference in speed between a 16 foot boat and a 17 foot boat or kayak. It's it's not a significant um, increase in speed, and and this is I should say it's it's consistent with what I see. Uh, uh, between when I paddle um, a kayak like uh, a 15 foot perception expression or, or, or a, a, a tsunami that's 14 and a half foot compared to a 17 foot a kayak like the Tempest, it's going to be a faster kayak just because it's longer. But again, that, that speed is, is not significant, 0.3 miles uh, per hour, not a huge difference. But if you're in a race, make all the difference in the world. Um, so that's that's what hull speed is. So one of the reasons this is a boat that is is fast is because you have a long waterline. There's not a lot of rocker in this uh, kayak, and so again, rocker is is the degree of curve on the bottom of the the kayak. You can see the zephyr sitting next to the uh, the tempest, and and you'll notice there's a bit more rocker for the on the zephyr, and that's that's because it's really an ocean. Play boat. It's made to edge and turn and ride waves. Um, versus the Tempest, it's uh, it's uh, there's a lot less rocker on the keel of this uh, kayak, and and that's because it's designed primarily for speed for uh, going to uh, from A to B, uh, and uh, and doing it quickly. Uh, just another picture. You can see the the same thing. Uh, the uh, Eclipse has got a lot more rocker. Uh, than the Tempest does. So and again, this this hull speed is basically the the uh, speed at which the uh, the wavelength coming off the boat, the wave, is equal to the length of the boat. Beyond the hull speed, it becomes increasingly difficult to uh, to increase in speed, and and paddling is is less efficient. Um, so that that's really what hull speed is. There's a couple other reasons. This is a fast, uh, a fast kayak. So its its length is one one of the reasons. Its waterline, rather. Also, it's it's a narrow kayak. If you'll notice, this is uh, 22 inch in width compared to something like the Expression uh, 15, which is 24 inch. Uh, the Zephyr uh, 160, 23 inch. So there's there's less resistance when you're in this kayak and you're paddling, and you achieve that hull speed. Um, you have less less of a profile moving through the water to push through the water. So guys, that's my, uh, that's my video review of the Tempest 170 by Wilderness Systems. I hope uh, something in the video helped you make your mind up as to whether or not this is the kayak for you. It is, it is a, a really 
cool kayak, a really nice kayak. And uh, I've had a lot of fun paddling this kayak, but it's a boat you, I think you need to grow into. So if this is your first kayak, I would say this is probably not the kayak you need to buy. You need to look around a little bit more and you get something a little more user friendly. Um, this is a boat for someone who uh, uh, is, is already had some experience paddling and, and has got some skills built up already um, or you know has some money to spend and wants to grow into this kayak and and develop some skills um, this if you're a bigger paddler though this is not the boat for you you need to you need to look at uh, look elsewhere they don't make the 18, 18 foot version anymore and I've never seen a used 18 foot tempest in fiberglass uh, anywhere um, for sale so I know they did make them at one point, but that's that's the that's the tempest you want to get if you're a larger paddler. So, uh, just something to keep in mind. Um, so, guys, until next time, I'll see you on the water.
Thank you.